Reformed Church. You know, I, I was just thinking about, and have been for a number of days, um, just, just thinking about things that, you know, that people go through and the things that the Lord has provided for us, you know. And, and, and here's a cool thing. It was just really last night, as, as I've been thinking about things over the last several days, just last night, the Lord reminded me of, of wisdom. And the cool thing is, it's not something that you would think would be associated with um, the way things go in our life. Like, like, in other words, when you think of, I don't know, when you think of uh, stuff that occurs in your life, um, circumstances that we might get ourselves into, uh, difficulties that we may have, things that we say that, you know, that... You, you think, oh, man, like I, I probably shouldn't have said that, or things that you do that you think, oh, wow, I probably shouldn't have done that. Or, but, but, but here's the thing that has just been really on my mind since the Lord showed me that yesterday and today. Um, there are many, many times that just if, if we were working in the judgment of the Lord, right, if we were working in, in the discernment of God, right, how, how the Lord could show you, you know what, like, like yeah, um, that's not something, like, you, you look at something, you're like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want, I don't want to look that up, I don't want to go here, I don't want to, you know, like, he gives you an immediate desire, like, if you acknowledge the Lord as your wisdom, giving you, giving you judgment between things, someone brings you a problem, and they say, you know what, I, I need you just to look at this thing, you know, I need to decide between A and B, Right. And, and very, very similar even to the wisdom of Solomon. Right. That you see that um, one of the things that Solomon operated in was the wisdom of God, but not, not just the not, not a wisdom of who Christ is and what Christ would provide. Right. But a wisdom to be able to judge properly. Right. And, and Paul talks about that a bit. Right. Where he says um, he says, like, don't you see that you one day will judge angels and yet you can't judge like the smallest matters between yourselves, right? But, but if you think of it this way, like we, we, have, we have on the inside of us, right, the, the wisdom that we need for every single circumstance. In other words, to be able to judge, and not just judge okay, but to be able to judge with excellent judgment when it comes to anything that you do. So that before, so, so that we don't have to live with the thing of, oh, I shouldn't have said that, or, oh, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, if I could have, you know, and, and, and here's the truth. Even if you mess something up royally, the Lord is going to turn things around for your good. He's going to make things work out for you. But the point is this, though, that there are things that don't have to go wrong, right? Like we, Things don't have to go wrong so that the Lord turns them around for good. Like, in other words, the reason to go out there blindly and just do stuff is not, hinged upon the fact that, oh, it doesn't really matter because after all, the Lord will just turn it around for my good, right? But there is wisdom, though, in the way that we carry ourselves. And the one thing that I was just praying, which is pretty cool, that when you, when you read about the wisdom of Israel, uh, the Lord was saying that they would be, that they would walk in the wisdom of God so that the Gentiles would actually look at the people of Israel and say of Israel, like, how wise this nation is. And then it goes on to talk about how, how, um, how, you know, there is no other nation upon the earth where God, you know, is so close to them, right? And how God has ha had led them and all this stuff, right? And, and, and that is true, right? Because at that time, God was not close like that to any other nation upon the face of the earth, right? But, but the truth is that God is not as close. There is no other people upon the face of the earth that God is as close to and that God has provided and given every bit of wisdom as he has to us compared, obviously, to the rest, to the nations of the world, right? So it's just a cool thing when you begin to think, you know, sometimes we think about prosperity in, in financial things. We think about uh, healing when it comes to physical health. We think about all these different things, right, that the Lord has given us. But it's a real cool thing that in front of all of those things, right, the Lord has given you, though, wisdom. Wisdom to know, you know what? Yeah, I shouldn't take that trip. I shouldn't go. Right? In, in other words, like we know, okay, so if you were to take a trip and you needed the protection of God for X, Y, Z, and even if something happened, the Lord would turn it around, all that's great, right? But there is a lot, though, that 
we don't e- doesn't even have to happen if, if we just were operating in that wisdom, right? So when you, when you think about all of the things that the Lord has given us, it's just a really cool thing to begin to think about and to acknowledge the Lord as your wisdom, like as, as your thinking. And as, I mean, think about all of this, the, the decisions that we make, all of the judgment calls that we make in our, in our days, in our weeks, in our months, where we don't acknowledge the Lord at all in any of those decisions. We just make them, right? But how cool is it to be able to slow way down, right? And really remind ourselves that it, it is no longer us that live, but it is Christ that lives on the inside of us. And that the wisdom that we, quote unquote, exercise ourselves apart from the wisdom of God, right? That th- those things don't have to work that way, right? But that we could actually slow way down and hit the brakes and be able to walk in the wisdom of God. To be, just, just acknowledge them. And you know what, granted, sometimes in certain cases decisions have to be made. But acknowledging the Lord and then knowing that, that you know what, Lord, I'm making this decision, and I, I believe that this is a decision that you, that agrees with, that you're in agreement with, a, a decision that is in line with Scripture, a decision that makes sense. You know, it, it, it's, just, it's just a really cool thing. When you, hear, when you hear people talk that exercise, that looks like they, what they're exercising is just common sense, you know, it, it's, it's funny when you go back to look at them that many of them are Christian people. Right, that have you know these things, these uh, ways to help out other people and businesses, and really a lot of it is really actually just common sense. But but the cool thing is that we can walk in more than just common sense. Right, the world can have common sense, but so we we should be able to walk in a way that that obviously has common sense, but but beyond common sense to be able to walk in actual wisdom that no matter the decision that gets thrown at you no matter the decision that you have to make between a or b we're we're always well supplied right with every single thing that we would need to be able to execute that decision appropriately just as just as solomon was he he came i mean you, you you guys have read before right how he how they presented him with certain circumstances and how quick he was, you know, to be able to make decisions and to say things that baffled the hearers, right? Where, where they were just astounded at his wisdom, where people would come from miles just to be able to hear the wisdom of Solomon. Yet all along, it was not Solomon's wisdom. All along, that's the wisdom of God operating in him, right? Um, so there's a whole other, a whole bunch of other stuff that, um, just that I've been looking at, just related to wisdom, but, but it's just something good to think about. Just one other thing that is part of all of our ways that we could begin to acknowledge God in, in, in wisdom, right? Lord, you know what? You're my wisdom. I don't have to rely on my own understanding, but I also don't have to also rely on my own understanding when it comes to decisions, right? In every single thing, no matter how small or how big, right? If we, if we lead lives where we think, well, this decision is a small decision. I can make this. We're actually kind of saying in a way, like, I got these little ones. I don't need Jesus for these little ones. I'll just use Jesus for the big decisions, right? But in actuality, it's all of our ways, right? Small decisions, big decisions. And you'd be surprised how little decisions that we make time and time again, how they have repercussions that then bring us yet to pray about certain things and ask the Lord, you know, to give us, to give us further wisdom and help and, and his, his, uh, his power to be able to help us and to turn situations around. But how way up front with the wisdom of God, those things really could have been preempted and we never even had to even get into that circumstance, right? We hope you enjoyed this message from Reform Church. If you have, please share this with someone else and help us get this uncommon truth out to the world. If you'd like to support this good news, you can do so at reformchurch.com give. Also on our website, you can take advantage of our free messages, articles, and even full discipleship courses. Start reforming your mind now at reformchurch.com.